Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, I am Amanda of the Amanda Made It podcast. Um, this is where I do share my knitting, crochet, spinning, maybe potentially some various other crafting pursuits. Uh, I am coming to you from Westerly, Rhode Island, uh, where I live with my two children and my husband. Um, it is sleeting outside right now. Um, hopefully it is uh, March 9th, it's a Wednesday, and I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be our last wintry mix of weather, potentially. Um, you know, it's New England, so it, there's always the possibility of some bullshit in April, but um, hopefully that will not happen this year. Um, I'm just going to put this out there. There's a whole bunch of bullshit happening in the world right now. Most of us are aware of it. Most of us feel some kind of way about it. Um, I just hope that this can be a slight bit of entertainment and distraction for all of us, for you and for me. Um, I am not trying to take away from the severity of the things that, is, that are occurring in multiple areas of the world. Um, and I don't expect anybody to, um, forget <laughs> what's going on. Uh, however, that is the last bit that I would like to say about that today, because I just want to have a little bit of fun. Um, so anywho, um... Yeah, so you can find me at On Ravelry as Manda Made It. I am also now on Instagram. Um, it was not a choice I made lightly to go back to some form of social media. Um, I am on Instagram as Manda Made It FA. FA is for Fiber Arts. Um, I chose to get back on because um, I wanted some more connection with other knitters and fiber artists um, of, of any sort. Um, and I decided to give myself a trial period to see if I felt like I was getting sucked into it, if I was taking up too much of my time. I have not as of yet found that. Um, I have found some fun people to follow and found other podcasts through Instagram that I don't know if I would have found otherwise. Um, this Instagram account is solely for knitting, crocheting, spinning, fiber art stuff. Uh, my children may show up on it on occasion because fiber art is in my life. <laughs> um, however, uh, this will not be a family account. I don't plan on sharing my weekend plans with anybody, that kind of stuff. Um, so if I know you in real life, sorry, that's not happening. Um, anyhow, uh, anywho, just putting that out there. Uh, so Amanda made it on Ravelry, Amanda made it FA on Instagram. Um, so with, uh, I think this is like kind of all the intro stuff. So we're just going to go on to finished objects. Um, the first finished object I'm going to talk about is this delightful thing that doesn't match at all what I'm wearing. Um, this was a test knit that I did for the Crafty Garden podcast. Stephanie is her name. Um, uh, she is a knitwear designer. She also has just started her own little Shetland sheep farm. It's adorable. Uh, she has a podcast. It's really just fun to watch. Um, and she designed this little raw, uh, wrap. I'm gonna back up and hold it up. Um, now this is a, it will eventually be a paid pattern, so I'm not gonna give any specific details. Uh, she has not released it yet. I don't know when it's going to be released. Um, I do think she has a couple more testers that are finishing theirs up. But um, I did this in the, in, I had a Yarnable subscription for a couple of months and two months. So I had these two skeins of their plush sock um, in Summer Vibes, which is the blue, um, blue one. And then the orange one was um, sweet and sour. Uh, I think it's an 80-20. And this was a really cool wrap because it is uh, two triangles, 
there's eyelet details on the edges and in the center um, meeting point. Let's see if I can, let me move up a little bit. So that's really pretty. Um, it is a very quick, intuitive, fun little knit. It's great for um, two skeins. She also has a, a three skein version um, for a for like a lighter fingering. Um, the yardage that she calls for is like somewhere around 460 yards uh, for each triangle. Um, mine, I misread the label, the amount of yardage I had in my label. So I did not actually have enough to complete the full pattern. Um, but we did uh, come up with a solution. Um, so that worked out and, and I'm very pleased with it. It's very, it's actually a really nice size. It's not too small and it's not super huge. The colors are very fun, bright and happy. Um, you know, and, and they play because it's the same base, they play so well together. Um, and you know, it's just, it is really super fun and happy. And, um, it was great to work on in the winter months, just because, you know, it was relaxing. It is crochet. Let me put that out there. This is my first project doing, uh, fingering weight yarn in crochet. Uh, it's just not something I've been compelled to do before uh but I did saw her testing call for this on Instagram and I just really liked the way it looked so I thought I'd give it a shot uh this is also the first time that I've done a testing call I, I haven't done a test anything in a very long time I did sample knits back in probably 2007 when I was living in Oregon and that sample knitting is not the same as test knitting so that was a different experience too um but Ooh, big old fat, fluffy, sleety stuff. Sorry. Um, I have to drive to get my daughter from school at some point. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so definitely at the Crafty Garden th uh, podcast, uh, thank you so much for letting me test this for you. Uh, it was really enjoyable. And uh, when it does come out, I will, you know, let people know. Um I just like it is soft it's very comfortable the yarn was great um you know and for I've knit with I've knit with tons of fingering weight yarns before I just haven't crocheted with it so this it was just fun to try something a little bit new for me but it didn't require a lot of brain power because mom life <laughs> um so I am going to take this off now but it was it is a great fun project that I highly recommend. Um, she does also will be offering video support for the pattern. So um, anyway, you can find out more information from her when that is out. Um, and I will also link my Ravelry page down below when it does come out. Um, let me see. The next finished object I have um, is a, another crochet project. This was a very quick, like, I need to do this. Um, I needed a cover for a pillow that I keep on my spinning chair that helps me to maintain my <laughs> posture. <laughs> it's a big, heavy, uh, like, thermo cooling pillow that we got when we bought our mattress. You know, they sell you those fucking ridiculously expensive pillows. We bought them and this is way too thick for me to sleep with comfortably. It hurts my neck, my shoulders, all of that. So I don't use it for that. It's great for my back support in my spinning chair, but it's cold. And I spin in my basement, which where it's cold and this pillow, like it adds to the freezing element of spinning. <laughs> so I realized I needed to make a cover for it. I have had this yarn, this green yarn in stash for over a decade. It was some Vanna's Choice um, acrylic in the olive colorway. I think I probably got it at Ocean State Job Lot um, on sale, because that's what happens at Ocean State Job Lot. Um, and it has mocked me for years. I have not known what to do with it. Um, I've made a, I made a, like a hat out of some of it and there a couple of other things, but I had enough to do something substantial, but I didn't want a lot of, I, I just, 
I just wanted this gone out of my stash. Um, so this, I used every last bit of it. It is just a, I, I didn't use a pattern. I just chained as long as, <laughs> as the pillow was. And then I did double crochet up. I did a half double crochet seam to seam two sides together. I made a big old rectangle to just seam the two sides together. And then continued until I was done with enough for a flap. And I have the, I had these buttons from like a bag of buttons from Michael's. Uh, I didn't care. This is going to be in my basement on my spinning chair. Um, I don't care what it looks like, but I am so pleased to have used this yarn. It is out of stash. It is such a good feeling on Ravelry to like have it all used up for me. <laughs> I enjoy that. Um, and just to have it actually be something useful that I did need and want. I'll probably have to take it off in the summer when it is hot. Although my basement stays pretty cool. So I don't know. We'll see. But that is just super, super exciting for me that I used up that yarn and now I won't be freezing my little tuchus off when I'm spinning in my basement. Um, I have one last FO which is a spinning FO. Um, I'm not going to share too much about it because I do have a video coming out in the next month about it. But uh, I spun my first bit of Angora bunny wool. Um, it was an ounce. I got it from Settlers Grove. I will link them below. The fiber was great. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, I just think I'm less of a soft bunny fluff spinner and more of a toothy wool spinner. Um, although this, it was nice to, to spin with something that I hadn't spun with before. Um, I got somewhere around like 43 yards for the ounce. Um, I mean, it is super soft and I am going to make something with it, but that will come more on that later uh, or another time. <laughs> I, I You can probably tell I'm just not that like, it's just limp, floppy, soft stuff, which, you know, time and place for that. But I just, I think I just prefer more oomph, you know, um, I'm just not a luxury person, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, so that's it for FOs. I, this, I'm going to show you some whips. Um, this one whip I would have had done by now, but I had to order more yarn, um, which I didn't get until two days ago. And this is my the classic from Espastrico. I am literally so close to done. Like, I think I've got, I'm gonna stand up with this. So I have got maybe two or three more rows and a bind off and I'm done. And I worked like hell on this yesterday and at night night last night, but I couldn't, I just, I just can't knit fast enough to get it done. Um, and I did start noticing a little bit of uh, discomfort in my hand because I did knit so much on it yesterday. Uh, so today I have not worked on it so much, um, but it will be done by next time I podcast, whenever that might be. Um, but yes, this is... This is in the Knit Picks palette, the Pumice Twist colorway. Um, it's marled. I I just love this. The the fit, it is a big baggy sweatshirty sweater. Like this is not, I did not make this. It, the, the sweatshirt, the, the sweater itself is not like a fitted sweater. Um, but I am so pleased with how this is coming out. It's loose, it's baggy, um, but not like slumpy looking. Um, and the yarn feels great. I do not find it scratchy at all. I know some would, but, uh, you know, <sighs> nitpicks is where it's at. If you want some 
budget friendly wool yarn. You know, there are other people out there, but you know, the reality is getting to a yarn shop is just not always feasible with schedules and children and things and just ordering online. I mean, shit, you got to do it. And this is a product that, and I'm not sponsored or anything, but this is a product that you know what you're going to get and, and it's, it's good. Um, so I ordered two more balls. I'm almost at the end of one of them. I am holding this double to get DK weight because it is fingering. Uh, this is what I have left of the first ball. I have one more ball after this. Uh, I think I'm going to have to crack into it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to crack into it and then, um, hopefully this will be done. So great pattern. Perfect for, uh, uh, beginning sweater knitter, um, you know, or just anybody who doesn't want to concentrate too much. You know, there's twisted rib, which is fine once you get into the rhythm of it, and there's uh, a little bit of short row shaping, but again, it's all, like, it's just miles of, there's no sleeve shaping, um, so, like, it's, it's perfect if you just need a do it kind of project. Um, my next whip, so I had a, um, let me grab these. I had a, uh, what do you call it? Every month I kind of set like a craft goal list of things that I would like to get done and not just get done, but that are actually achievable for me. Um, and then once I reach them, I don't have to work anymore on that project. And that's a good system for me for getting work done on things I would like to work on, but also not having that frantic, I need to finish this feeling about every single thing. Uh, so the first one, I have three pairs of socks on the needles right now, which is something new for me, but that's okay. They're not all for me. Only one pair is for me. And this pair, <clears throat> which my goal for March was to get it to get through the heels on it. And I did. These are for my mom. I had her measure her foot. And these feel long. I don't know. We're going to see. Like, if I just have to cut the toe and redo it, I will. That'll be another new thing I learned how to do. But um, the yarn is lollipop yarns in the, um, the Hard Day's Night self-striping self sock set thing. Um an 80 20 it's uh feels nice i like the stripes it's like stripey but not obnoxious you know the blues are nice to work with so and greens and grays and stuff anyway you know i hope my mom likes them i hope they fit <laughs> but we will see so again and i do work my socks in tandem so you know i don't get that second sock syndrome because i just like really does it doesn't apply to how when I knit like this um I've tried magic loop I can't stand it um and two at a time and I don't know I could I you know what two at a time on two circulars might not be so bad because I did do some some two at a time on a hat recently and it didn't suck so we'll see uh the second sock whip I have is a pair that I'm making for my friend Nicole. Nick. I don't call her Nicole. She's Nick. I don't call her Nikki. She's Nick. Um, but I had gotten these. The goal for this month was to get these to where I could start the heel. And I have gotten there according to her measurements that I made her take for me. <laughs> because, you know, you need some numbers at least like you can do it with just shoe size but it's not always gonna be like that great so this is a regia space colorway i think it was i don't remember the number but it's uh i think it was like neptune um and again blue she's she likes blues so i did make choose this one for her something i had in stash um and again they're both to the same point because in tandem um so I just need to, I can start on the heels on these at any point, And I may do that once I get this classic done. Um, and then my third pair of socks is not blue. <laughs> um, it's a pair for me. 
that I'm making using yarn I had gotten from Knit Crate. Uh, it's their Cloud Sock in uh, Honeymoon and Eclipse. And I'm striping them together. I had made my daughter a pair of spiral no heel socks in the honeymoon which is a lighter pinky color um and i have a ton of it left so i just decided to stripe it in with i like valentine's was around and everything was red and pink and i just i had two blue socks on i just i had these yarns i wanted red and pink striped socks so i'm making them um I think this is, I don't remember what the makeup, the, the, it has mohair in it, I know that. Um, so it's probably, it might be, you know, I'm I, uh, cashmere mohair and merino. I don't know. I'll link my Ravelry page. Um, so anyway, my goal for these is just to get halfway through the foot for the month. Um, I will probably be able to get to the point where I can start the heels on these. So. These are my two little socks. I just think that the colors are so pretty. Like they are speckled, but it's kind of hard to tell. So like the red has these really dark black. Sorry, let me not cover my mouth. Black speckles. And then the honeymoon, the light pink has like these orangey, yellowy um, speckles. They are very pretty together too. So it's fun. Um, okay. One other whip that I started actually, uh, when I was waiting, I started it, I don't remember when I started it, um, but I, maybe yesterday, day before, I have decided, let me center again, um, I started this hat with some yarn that my daughter and I had dyed with Kool-Aid. Uh, this was Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, Bear, and we dyed it with Grape and Blue Raspberry, I think, and maybe Cherry. Um, we did this several months ago, and uh, I decided to make a hat for my daughter, and I'm just going to do a simple rolled brim hat. Uh, the kicker, though, is that I am knitting this only in Continental. Um realizing that when I go on like some serious knitting you know binges um I do need to have some tools in my toolbox so that I don't injure myself with repetitive um motion stuff uh you know I, I don't want to hurt myself doing something that brings me so much joy so um I've decided to kind of just have a, a continental project on the go so I can, you know, pick that up to, to kind of change how my, my hands are being used in the hopes that that will mitigate some of the stress that I may be putting on them. Um, so that's that. I think that's it for my whips. I have a future cast on that has been presenting me with problems because I started swatching for it. And I've seen that this is, I know that this is a, a thing for people. Let me start with, I got this yarn from um, Skein Yarn Shop in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. And it's the Red Stag Fibers. See, do I have the, I think I have the label in here. Um, yeah, Red Stag Fiber. Uh, antique rose colorway. It's in their Croft fingering. It is a uh, superwash blue face luster um, yarn. And the color antique rose, I mean, it's freaking gorgeous. Like, it's reading pretty, a little pinker, pinkier. I mean, it is pink, but it's it's just gorgeous. It's a, it's a great color. Um, and I had purchased this with the intention of doing a Tegna. And I was going to do the size medium in uh, the Tegna, so I only got two skeins. Uh, I was, I probably should have gotten three because I do think, so 
this is me getting gauge. Now I know this is not a full proper gauge swatch, but the gauge is supposed to be 22, I guess it's screwed up drop stitch there, but the gauge is supposed to be 22 stitches for four inches. And that's what this is, but it's honest. And I'm supposed to get that with a, a size three needle. I was so far off with a three needle. I went up four sizes. I'm on a seven. And the fabric on this is just a little, like it's gonna be see-through. Like it's definitely gonna be see-through if I use this needle. So I don't know if I want to do math. If I want to go down a couple needle sizes and knit the large, use the numbers from the large with a finer gauge. I don't have any experience with that. I have never done that. And I really don't know if I want this to be the first time I do that. So I'm kind of at a standstill with this because uh, my options are, I have other yarn I could use, but I bought this specifically for the pattern, the Kegna. Um, so I want to use it for that uh, because this, I, like, this is the color that I saw the tag night, and that's what I want. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I will have to. I'll have to think on that some more. If you have any experience with knitting the Tagna, like I know it has a ton of positive ease, but I I just I need to. I need to look some more and and figure out what I'm gonna do. Um. What else did I, I did get a couple of other things this week. Um, this is not something that is going to really get used for a while, but this is the art of washing wool, mohair, and alpaca. It's about scouring your wool. It's a scouring and fiber prep guide and it's by um, Mary of Camage Fiber Art. Um, uh, you know, the reality is that I am going to want to process my own fleece. I just know I'm going to want to do it. So I should probably try to learn how to, like, at least read up on how to do it before I do that. Like, I don't know how to buy a fleece. And, and, and you know, this is hopefully going to give me a little bit of uh, insight before I go willy-nilly spending money on something I have no business buying. So we'll see. I'll, I'll let you, that, that's going to be a future project. I'll let you know how that goes at some point. Um, the last thing that I picked up this week, well, because I had to buy more yarn for the classic. And I mean, you know, you, you don't just buy two balls and pay shipping. Like you, you buy enough, so buy enough of something so that you don't have to pay shipping because that's how this works. Okay. Um, if anybody has any questions, that's how this works. So another pattern that I have had on my radar for a while that I really would like to do is the Soldatna Crop, also by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks, who is also the designer for the Tegna sweater. Um, I think she had a sale and I had bought uh, like three of her patterns. I, I think I got the Wellerman shawl as well. Um, but anyway, so I, I was I decided to get some yarn for the Soldatna Crop. And I wasn't quite sure about colors, so I got a few different, I think I got three skeins of just about everything. Um, now it calls for four colors, and I wasn't quite sure which four I was going to want. So it looks like there's two dark colors in it and two lighter colors. So, you know, the, these would be my options for the darker colors, I think. I really like this green, which is called, um, what is this called? Aurora Heather. Um, I think it's beautiful. Uh, so I don't know if I would want this to be the all over. Basically, I don't know if I want this to be a more neutral sweater or to have that pop be a little bit more there. <laughs> so these are my options for the the uh, 
darker colors. So it's Aurora Heather, um, Pumpkin, and Chestnut. And then I also got for the lighter colors, Turmeric and Oyster Heather. So, you know, like this, this actually looks really good together in my opinion. Super nice neutrals, everything plays well together. Um, you know, but then if I do that, there's like that added element of like richness to it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I have to swatch is what I need to do and I'm going to do that. So I don't know. I will show you guys more after I swatch and then I will have a better idea of, I think what I would like to do, um, and what makes sense for me and my aesthetic preferences. Cause you know, that's a thing. We all have the way that we like things to look and it may not be the same for everybody. It's definitely not the same for everybody, you know? Um, like what I like to work with is bright colors and fun stuff, but what I like to actually wear more on the neutral side or like, I don't like the word conservative. Like it bothers me that word conservative, but I think I do like more conservative styles of stuff. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. You know, when you're younger and you have an idea of yourself and how you want to be portrayed and how you want to portray yourself, and then you get older and realize you're an idiot and that, that, or, or you've changed, not that you're an idiot, that you have changed and you have grown and that your tastes and preferences are different. Sometimes it's hard to reconcile that. Um, so I think that's what I'm doing at almost 40 years old is trying to reconcile 40 year old me with 20 year old me <sighs> when they both just don't get along well. <laughs> um, so uh, life stuff. Not much is happening. Um, my older daughter, who's five, wanted a Karen haircut. So she, if your name is Karen, I am not, I don't mean to be offensive. Um, she, she got the ask a manager haircut. She wanted it. I don't care. It's hair. You do what you want to it. Um, and, uh, she looks adorable. Um, the 15 month old, she's walking babbling, doing the things, um, you know, life is chaotically boring as usual. <laughs> like everything feels busy and at the same time, it's the same busyness every day. Um, but you know, it's, uh, some good stuff, you know, I, everybody's healthy, everybody's safe, you know, um, which is not something that everybody in the world can say right now. And usually that's the case anyway, whether or not there's a beginning of World War Three or <sighs> that shit that's going on in te Texas. What are you doing? Um, mm, anyway, so yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. That is my episode for this week. Uh, I appreciate if you are here and have been uh, checking it out and hanging out with me and letting me babble on about the things that I'm making. Um, I would love to hear what you're making, what you're doing. Are you learning to spin? Are you learning to knit, learning to crochet? Um, what's up? What you got? Anything fun, exciting, new? Um, give me a follow on Instagram. Let me know who you are. Um, and I will follow you back. <laughs> Let me put that out there. Uh, and yeah, so I do want to leave you with the idea and the notion that you are worthy of whatever good choice that you make for yourself. You deserve it. You're allowed to do it. And you are worth it. Okay. Talk to you guys next time.